Hey everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and we are back with Drew from Akusha Collectibles. Um, we had an awesome video where we went through some of his sort of personal, this is so cool that it's not for sale, it's in my personal collection uh, type stuff, and we're going to be continuing that with some even crazier stories and gorgeous coins. So thank you for being here, Drew. Yeah, my pleasure. So I figured we would just start out with this one because when I saw it in person, I was like, hey, I think I've seen that coin before and they filled me in that I definitely had. You know, what an awesome looking coin. Uh, can you just provide everything you know in terms of, you know, the provenance and how it might have happened? It, it just stands out as something like I haven't seen before. Yeah, so the term for this coin is an end of roll toned Morgan dollar. And the reason being is because a lot of these coins were put in uh, you know, stacks of 20 and put in rolls. And the cool thing about this coin is that it was at the end of a roll. And the way you know that is based on the folds that the paper had over the coin. So if you can see that uh, you know, blue and orange that the, the coin has in terms of its color, that's where the paper sat on the coin. Um, where you see the kind of darker spots or the terminal spots, that's where the paper was absent from the coin uh, when it was in its roll. Someone ended up pulling this coin out of the roll and ended up sending it to PCGS, and it's just a really exceptional piece. Yeah, and was this something that, you know, did you buy the roll and, and pull it out, or, uh, you know, did you pay up for the incredible, and I assume because it's end of roll, you know, it's going to be white on the back, but uh, can you t give a little more info about how you acquired it? So I started selling coins back um, in 2020 in March, and I saw this coin um, on, on a page, and, that, and the coin sold about a year before... I even saw it on his page. And this coin really inspired me to start buying and selling. It was like, I call this coin the crown jewel of my collection. And uh, I worked for about six months to be able to afford this coin. And Gary ended up buying this for me. Okay, cool. Gary's, uh, you know, for the regular viewers, probably definitely recognize his name. But um, yeah, nice to get the coin from him. Um, and, you know, great piece to show as, you know, I think a strong start for this video. Is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you would want to share? Um, it's just a really interesting example because most of the end of rolls that you would normally see, there's very faint lines and there's not that much, much intensity in terms of color. This one being very central on the face and uh, it, it being just very kind of different in terms of its contrast of colors really makes this one extraordinarily rare and the 1889 Morgan um, just doesn't tone like others do. That It's very hard for them to be found to with toning. Awesome. Well, such a, a strong start. And I think, you know, I think we have some, I sort of front loaded, but there's actually a lot of toning all through this, almost all US, some awesome German stuff. This one, you know, also just super vibrant, like every color in the rainbow here, a mid state 66 dime, you know, let's look at the back. You know, and I, I kind of like, I think that that's a sort of neat type of toning where you have just a really quick crescendo and then a more normal looking one. But uh, what did you pay for this? And, and, you know, is it, do you have any idea how this toning could have occurred? I'm not too sure or certain on the toning. Maybe you sat in an album, but this coin I paid about $100, $125 for, and the color was just very nice. It was in an old, it was in an annex holder, uh, one of those yellow ones, and the color really just spoke to us. I just don't see them with that really intense greens and pinks, and so we ended up submitting this one ourselves and getting it crossed over and it ended up grading mint state 66 not the highest grade that you'd want for a roosevelt dime but just amazing color i think this one is probably valued about five hundred dollars right now so decent return for this coin for sure no that's a big jump and the next one you know it's something that we talked about and i forgot about it but this one also has a huge jump and maybe you can educate us a little bit. You know, it's a 1940, it's obviously gold CAC, um, you know, mint state 65, but I think there's a little more to the story. Yeah, so this is called an NGC white label. So this coin holder and the paper that's used to display the date and the grade, um, it was used, I think, for uh, a week or two or a few weeks during the kind of the genesis of NGC. And so this holder is very sought after. People really like this holder and want to assemble full sets in them. There's probably only a few uh, hundred, maybe a thousand that exist, and a lot of them have been cracked out. But the really interesting story about this coin is that we ended up finding this coin in uh, in Bossier City when we went to a coin show. And I would value this coin at around $2,500 because of the gold cack sticker and everything that has to do with it. And we ended up paying around $130 for this coin. So um, we got it super cheap, and it ended up gold cacking too. Just so many great things about this coin and the history of numismatics. 
for sure. Now there's a little something on this as well. Lee certified coins limited, you know, 395. Why haven't you removed that basically? Does it add something from your perspective to the history? I just think it's it was a part of uh, just understanding maybe where the marketers kind of, you know, it's understanding a marketing company and that they come and go, but also that this coin had that sticker on it. And the interesting part about this is that there's about five or six walkers at the show that one was a white label and the rest were kind of a little bit newer gen. They had like a green label in the back. Um, all were really old holders, but they all ended up, I think, gold khaking. Whoa. So um, just something that really makes this coin interesting for sure. I wanted to keep that on there for just learning purposes. Definitely. No, thanks so much. And again, everybody look out for these white label NGC holders. Uh, I think after that, we're going to continue sort of the um, toning attack with a beautifully toned, in my opinion, uh, Mint State 64 Buffalo nickel. And what's the sort of value premium on what I assume otherwise would, you know, the, the coin would trade for, I don't know, what, like 40 bucks if it didn't have the toning or maybe a little more. Yeah, I think this is about a $60, $75 coin just based on the grade and uh, its date. The reason why I bought this coin, I think I, I got it in a trade for about 100 bucks. But the intense toning on the obverse of the coin and its, its rainbow hugging behind the head. And, I mean, the coin overall is just really spectacular in its toning. People would pay an extraordinary premium for this coin. So got it pretty cheap and uh, really do love it. It's probably one of the nicest tone buffaloes I've handled myself. For sure. No, definitely up there in terms of what I've seen uh, as well. Um, after this, you know, sort of a classic, everybody when they start, uh, you know, hearing about coins, at least this was my experience, you know, you hear about the CC, the Carson City, Comstock load, you know, they're pumping out tons of silver. So it makes sense to put in a mint, um, you know, right where the um, things are, you know, the materials being mined, but it's also deep mirror proof like. So, you know, you can see the camera, you can even see my, uh, my head a little bit, but if I put my finger up to it, you know, super, super mirrory. Um, and yeah, why did you pull this one aside instead of continuing to trade it? So the reason why we picked this one out is because proof like and deep mirror proof like can span in many directions in terms of uh, the haze on the coin and people still accept it as a proof like and some coins they put in holders back then that weren't even proof like and they labeled proof like. So uh, the interesting thing about this coin is that the mirrors are so deep and the contrast is so good that we really thought we should keep it. And we ended up buying this one at a, at a show um, for super cheap as well. We spent like $500 on this coin. And I think retail is around 850 for it. Sweet. No, that's great to hear. And, you know, shows, if you're hitting a lot of shows, eventually you run into some pretty good material. And with the right eye, you know, and the confidence to buy, some good things can happen. Mm -hmm. Here's a Mint State 65 37D CAC approved Buffalo nickel. Is it a similar picture to what we just discussed before? Yeah, so we ended up. Paying, paying about $10 over gray sheet for each one of these. And the toning is just very spectacular. We ended up sending these to CAC ourselves. And we just really are in love with the coins and what they look like. And it really fits great in our Buffalo set. Um, this one is pretty close to the certain number of the other Buffalo that we're about to show you. Um, but it, they're just really beautiful coins. Uh, I think these uh, ultimately for a retail value would go about $1,000 for the pair. Awesome. Well, yeah, I'll just show the other one briefly, and then I'm excited to jump in, unless you have anything else you'd want to add on the buffalo on the right um, to some pretty special coins that are world, um, but sort of fit the toned theme and the, you know, also the theme of my ancestors come from Prussia. But did you want to say anything about the coin on the right before we move on? Yeah, I think it was an overall great balance of, of color between these two that also complement the other buffalo that we saw as well. So just having those as a full circle really do uh, make make these buffalo stand out and really fit great in our collection. Awesome. Um, but the, uh, the this final coin that I wanted to discuss um, that you had brought out, you know, I'm going to, and to be fully frank, you know, I researched a lot of this right before, but I am a, a German dual citizen with U.S., so I always think it's cool, you know, Prussia, uh, sort of a precursor to Germany, a German state, and here we see the 200th year of its founding. So in 1701, we see um, I think Friedrich the first, um, first king of Prussia, right next to Wilhelm the second, who was the German emperor, king of Prussia at the time that this coin was minted. Um, and you know, I always think that the Germans do some incredible things, whether it's with their medals or their extensive commemoratives in the two, three, five mark um, era. You know, 
it's sort of crazy. I hadn't didn't know you dealt in world. I think you've made a comment and personally that you don't do a ton with world at the moment. So how does this stuff end up with you? And then also, you know, th this coin on the left, you know, certified so much earlier compared to the ones on the right. So can you just sort of tell me everything there is to know about these ones? So when I first saw one of these raw in person, there were it wasn't colorful like these, but I did really enjoy the design of the obverse. Um, you're going to see the design of the reverse very common with a lot of these. Um, but the design of the obverse really just took me back. It really was interesting with uh, the bird that's at the top of the head or, or the helm. I like the design of the helm and also the clothes that they're wearing. And um, so we bought one of them super cheap, and our goal was to just keep looking for ones that were toned. And so this one ended up coming to us. We paid a decent premium on a lot of these. Um, some people wouldn't pay, but I think... Um, having all three of these in a set with different colors that complement each other really make it, you know, very inspiring and interesting to look at. Definitely. No, I just think that there's something to being like, hey, that coin looks awesome. I'm just going to own it. And I, I really like the. I think normally I don't love black toning or super terminal toning, but it, it is looks great um, on this coin, in my opinion. So uh, if, is there anything else that I've missed on the coins that were in front of us in today's video? I think they've been spectacular. I think you captured everything well, Christian, and I thank you for uh, having me on. Awesome. Well, again, title is going to clearly have the link, as will the description, so make sure to head on over to Drew and his brother Casey's channel um, to hear some regular updates from their lives as they deal and, you know, talk coins. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe to Treasure Town, and get in touch with me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, check out my website, treasuretowncoins.com, for news and updates related to the channel and collectibles in general. Lastly, there's a link tree in the description with links to all of my other sites as well as some affiliate links that can support the channel. But with that being said, have a great day and I'll hope to see you on some of my videos in the future.